Okay everyone, welcome back to Garage Story. So we're back in the shop working on the Yazuki ZT Max. In the last episode, we were able to get it to crank and run just a little bit, but not very well. So we still have a lot of troubleshooting that we need to do to try to get this thing to actually run and throttle up. There's something funky going on here. And see if we can actually drive it. Come along, I'll we'll see how it goes. All right. Got our football gasket in, so let's clean the carburetor again, put this gasket in, and see if it runs better. So I found this kind of funky. I took out the main jet here, and there's another jet right below it. Like, there are two jets stacked on top of each other. And I have no idea why they would do that. Again, I don't know that much about it. It's a Kawasaki carburetor not my specialty. This one down in there, it's still in there. It was a lot harder to get out. As I was unscrewing it out of there, it started hanging up. So I just decided it wasn't worth it. I'm just gonna screw it back in. I can see through it just fine and it's a pretty large orifice on there. So I think it's gonna be okay. And these screwdrivers, they tend to get wider right here where they're flattened out. And that makes it really hard to reach down into a deep space. And this one here is a lot straighter. This one you can see it a lot more how it's wider there. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so I looked it up and there is supposed to be that jet in there. The lower one is not the same type of jet. The one I pulled out is actually just the seat for this needle, the electric cutoff solenoid. Let's put it back in and see how it runs. similar issue, if not the same issue. It won't stay running. On choke, it'll fire up. It's running out of fuel somehow, I think. It's starting to rain, which is good. I think I need to check that fuel shut off solenoid, or not fuel shut off solenoid, but the solenoid on the carburetor. Okay, I just got the solenoid back out. Let's see if it's working. Plug it in here. I'm gonna turn on the key and let's see if it's actually actuating. So you can see there are some sparks there. And yeah, the solenoid's not actuating. So no wonder the motor's not running. It can't get enough fuel. It's not cycling consistently. So yeah, that's an issue. The sparking tells me that it's getting current. You know, I just remembered something. Sometimes these solenoids, when they're disconnected or out of the carburetor, they can protrude farther than they normally would. And in reality, in the carburetor, it may not be, the needle may not be able to come up that far, maybe down here. And if it's down there, it may retract. But when it's out all the way, see if I touch it just a little bit, it goes all the way. So it may not be the issue, but what I like is to be able to hear and feel that it's working. And I can't quite hear and feel that it's working. Yeah, there's some thunder and rain out there. Oh, well, not too much rain. I feel like it should work after thinking about it a little more. So the mower is still not running well. Pretty much the same scenario. So I was trying to figure out how on earth I could get that main jet out. Um, I was thinking about possibly needing to grind down a screwdriver to take the hips off of it. And I was reading up a little bit and someone mentioned using a hollow core screwdriver, which I hadn't thought about. One of these. Since these have bits that swap around, they're made straight. So let's see if this can get that jet out of here. It fits in there really nice. Wow, this actually makes a huge difference. It's not stripping, rubbing, I have control of it. There we go. Sometimes you just need the right tool for the job, but it's nice when you realize that you actually already had the right tool. So this is the main jet. And this has lots of little bitty orifices on the sides there that need to be cleaned out. That might make this thing run a lot better. It's the same way. It did not fix the issue. All 
Why is it not getting enough fuel? Is it my fuel shut off solenoid or is it my whole carburetor that's clogged up somehow? All right, so I'm doing a little experiment here trying to rule out issues. I took this solenoid out and I replaced it with another solenoid that shouldn't block off fuel the same way. And it might help and rule it out and it might just be a divergent path that doesn't really help. But if it does help, then that will tell me something. If it doesn't help, it may not tell me much. Yes! All right, check the oil again, and then we'll re-engage the transmissions and see if they work. So to engage and disengage the transmissions on here, we have these, these things right here. They need to be re-engaged. Put them back in all the way. All right, we're ready for the second moment of truth. Well, the first was seeing if the engine actually can run, I guess the second was getting it running, where it will stay running, and I guess you could call this the third moment of truth. Let's see if the transmissions work, and then we need to see if the deck will engage. So, let's do it. another safety switch messing up on us but it seemed like the transmissions were working at least somewhat there's something funky going on because my arm safety switches are functioning in one sense because if I have them in the mower won't start I put them out the mower will start then when I bring them back in it turns the mower off again I'm gonna have to dive into safety switches <laughs> All right, I messed around with some stuff, like uh, pulling out fuses and stuff and just trying switches and things, and it seems like it works now, so. There's something funky going on here. I think it's my ignition switch is slightly finicky. I think I got it. I think we got it this time. I need to like push my ignition switch really close to the start position for it to contact everything it needs to. So it may need a new ignition switch. That may be why they stopped using it. And it's also possible that that's why the fuel solenoid wasn't activating. It runs! I think the spindle should probably be greased, but I think the culprit's a funky ignition switch, and that's probably why the solenoid wasn't working. Because when I tested it, sometimes it did work, but yet the mower just wouldn't run with it. Or maybe when the key was in the start position, it would back off and it would start running, but then as soon as I turned the key, 
you know, back to run because you don't want to leave your starter engaged, the solenoid would go back up in there and cut off fuel flow through the main jet. That's my hypothesis. So I think with a new ignition switch, this mower might run great. But I probably wouldn't have figured that out except for that sensitivity with the handlebar levers there because the mower doesn't always know that it's in the run position in 100% of the way. I kind of want to try mowing with it. That's great. It's kind of like a commercial mower, basically. I think it is. I mean, it's all welded and has the separate hydraulic pump and transmissions. It's a nice little mower. All right, so let's see if we can get this ignition switch changed out. I kind of parked a whole bunch of stuff in the shop here, and now I can't get this thing started to get it back out, so we may as well change it out now since it needs to be changed out. So let's do it. So to change out the ignition, basically take the key out, we'll pull this little cover off of here. When we do that, it should expose a nut here that we can use to unscrew it. Then it should pull the whole thing out from the backside. Hopefully we can move it around down here where we can see it and unplug it, plug the new one in, and put it back in here, put the nut on, put the key on, and hopefully then everything works. But there's one small detail. I don't have a new ignition, so I'm gonna have to find an old ignition. So I kind of have to see what this ignition looks like and then go see if I can find another ignition that will work instead. I think this is the layout I need where it's like three, two, one, and then one off to the side. Somebody smarter than me may know more about that, but I'm just gonna try to get one that looks the same. The ignition is this thing right back here. Actually, it feels like it's a one, two, two, not a one, three, three. So that plug I have here may work. Let's get this apart and see if we can pull that wire out. Well, that nut is super loose. There we are. So yeah, this is a uh, one, two, two, two of the stray, which looks a lot like this. So since I have this one, I may as well try this one. Pull the stray off. Now I can actually go ahead and try it out. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and throw this up in there. So this is on like that. Is the key the right orientation? Off, on. Perfect. All right, I think this is really a good little mower. That ignition switch seems to fix that issue. So really the only other thing left would be to possibly try, try to double check, make sure the right gas tank is working or get it working if it's not. I mean, all the tires are still holding air. They're not pretty, but it's not really worth my time and effort to try to replace them all if they all hold air and they all match. I could try to clean it up a little bit. I don't know that it's gonna clean up and look that much better because it's got enough nicks and scratches in the paint. It still looks good. I may wash it. I just don't think it's gonna be worth a whole lot more. So really, I think this mower is about ready to sell. So we put a new battery in it. So that's a that's good. The blades are decent. It's a really good little mower. I like it. This is like a nice commercial mower. This is probably the nicest mower that I've had in here to work on. Or should I say the highest quality mower? I would believe it if you told me this was the same as the X Mark mower of the same era. Because I, I think it is. Of course, X marks are top tier mowers, one of the one of many. All right, let's see if we can fix the remaining issues, which are getting the solenoid back in the carburetor and verifying that it was just the ignition switch that was the issue, and then 
getting the right gas tank functional. Other than that, I think it's mostly just cleaning the mower off unless I want to try to fix the seat and stuff like that. Yeah, let's fix these two things. Well, that got kind of messy. So I was trying to take the fitting off the bottom of the gas tank and of course there was gas in there and I wasn't able to get it funneled out properly. I should have just siphoned it out first, but oh well, I was a little bit lazy, I guess. I have the pump. I guess I just somehow thought I'd be able to get it funneled in there. But the good thing is, is these pig mat blankets really absorb stuff really quick and it's just gasoline, so it's not a major ordeal. Yeah, why do I do things like that sometimes? I think this 90 degree is probably what's clogged. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get this loosened up out of here and see if I can't get this tank working. Well that took almost no time at all. A little carb cleaner in this elbow here and then some pressure from the other end of the line to port force out this way and it seems like it's pretty clear now so let's put it back together. All right now I got that fitting on over there on the bottom of the tank. I'm gonna put my pump on my line here and I put the outside on there so I'm pumping air into the tank and listen. Yeah, I can hear air coming up through the tank, so that's good. So now, I want to put some gas in there and uh, make sure I can pump it out. I pumped air into the tank, I can hear it gurgling in there. Now I'm going to try pump fuel out here. That's a mess. Yep. Oh yeah. So we're good there. Yeah. The right hand tank should be working now. All right, I think we're done putting it back together. I can pull fuel from both tanks now, it looks like, and I tried to suck out the fuel near the carburetor, so hopefully there's not too much junk in there from trying to run it off this tank, which was kind of plugged, but I think it may have gotten a little junk in there because the football had some crud in there, but I wiped that out. Oil looks good on here. I think really I'm just gonna let all the gasoline evaporate quite a bit and um, then try it out and see if it runs good off both tanks. And if so, then I think the only thing left really is to wash this thing up. That was successful. So that shut off solenoid in the carburetor is functioning properly and we're running off both tanks well. I think it's I think it's working a little bit of that crud out I may have sucked in, so a little water or whatever. Um, but it runs pretty good and the battery is charging properly, so I think this motor is ready to be washed up and put up for sale again. I actually already listed it the way it was and didn't get a lot of responses, so I'm gonna try to wash this thing up and get some better pictures of it.